Anyway, enough of that. We're going to look at working the pulley. What I'm going to do, and if Barbara, if you don't mind, I'll move and you can kind of talk about it. Okay. What I forgot to do was to email everybody and tell you all to have a tiny, kind of a little stone that you could tape on your hand. So I forgot to do that. But if anybody has something really handy, a little stone, you'd have to kind of tape it so it doesn't fall off the palm of your hand. If you don't have it available, don't worry. Just pretend there's a stone in your hand. For now, it just, I would just, uh, don't try to do it with me. Just kind of relax for a minute and watch me for this portion of it. And then we can all get up and move. So I'm going to come into pause position. I'm going to set up. And I'm going to move. So just sort of look at the orange ball. From the side. Again, I have my ball. It's in my left hand. I settle in. Place the heel. So um, I'd like to talk just a little bit about the mechanics of this movement. And that, uh, um, as you know, I think one of the challenges to this uh, working the pulley is, is to close, is to come to rest, to finish the movement. And there's a reason for that. And I know uh, some of you, uh, are kind of interested in the mechanics of it. And so it's best to explain it while I'm kind of doing it. So in this movement, I'm going to, I'll do, do it from the side. We come into pause position, make our weight shift, settling down. And we place a heel. Nothing is different, right? So then I move to get to the first forward weight shift. Now notice that my arms are kind of the same distance apart. There's a tendency to kind of let this one shorten up a little and not bring the elbow back. This is my forward weight shift. I am on the front of my foot. I am ready to complete the pulley wheel and start to come back. Now here I am all the way back. I should be midway here. I should be out enough. Those should be somewhat the same distance. I hope they are, Barbara, I can't see. <laughs> so those are your checkpoints. We all, always talk about forward and back, you know, that. There's a checkpoint going forward and a checkpoint coming back. And this is where we start. But I want to explain about there's a connection between how we start and how we stop and why this, the finish of the movement is a little bit more complicated. I, my Dantian, when I get to here to start, is in its full back position. I can't go back any farther. But when I move here to get to the forward weight, my hands have not, they have gone half the distance they'll have to go from now on. Because when I go back, I have to get all the way back to here. Now I didn't start here. If I was starting here, then I would have that same synchronicity. So in the beginning, the upper body is doing half of its movement because I'm already here in the middle of it. After that, it has to make its whole movement, which we usually do and don't even think about it. But that's going to then affect the finish when we come to pause position. So here, when I'm going to finish, all of a sudden I go, oh dear, this hand has to get all the way back and around this hand's already back and only has to come here. 
So I have to really slow the backhand now. I have to slow this backhand way down. And my Dantian's coming back, and that even makes it more confusing to close. So that's why the finish is a little bit, I don't want to say awkward, but takes a little bit of a difference because of the beginning sets it up. We have to complete it by doing the finish with one moving extremely slow and the other doing its normal pace. So I know we usually get questions about the finish and that's the reason. Okay, so I've lost where we're going, Barbara, so I'm just gonna move. <laughs> Folks are gonna just kind of find themselves in that halfway point with equality in their arms so they can feel that. There's the forward. Now, are you leaning or are you, is your body straight up and down? So check your upper body. Are you over the forward weight shift? Okay, now we're gonna come back, back, back. I'll come forward again. Checkpoint all the way forward. Checkpoint all the way back. Now, if I was to come forward again, now I'm going to come to close. Let the backhand slow way down. Have the Dantian bring the other hand around I normally would and then close. So not unlike when we do uh, passing clouds where one hand starts and then the other hand starts. So we have a finish that's a little different. This movement's the same way in its own unique way. It finishes a little different. Upper body um, travels less in the beginning in the first half, and then after that, it goes into its flow. Oftentimes for me, that makes me, after I start going, I start to slow the Dantian down knowing that there's a lot more travel from the arms than there is in distance than from the Dantian not only slows my Dantian down, which is good, but it also gets me grounded a little better. I get down into my legs a little better. And that helps me because we're rotating our bodies and I feel I need a little more grounding to keep my center line, right? The, the body's rotating, but the head always stays relatively straight. And it's a little bit more of a challenge in this movement and it's more of a challenge in anchor taffy. So there's a tendency for our head to kind of want to rotate. Now, you're, you may rotate a little because you, you know, you're getting a little stretch in the neck, but it would be minimal. And of course, as important as not rotating is the fact that you don't want your head to tip forward or back. Most people tend to tip a little bit forward. They're driving forward, the head tends to tick a little bit forward. So. It's a matter of it's straight up and down and it's straight up and down. So yeah, that's that that's easy to do to get your head kind of following in the direction.